Moving on to SOCAS, these stand for Student Online Communication Assessment. You take a 15 minute history with a simulated patient about the system you're currently studying. Exams in your one. If you do fail, useful documents, location in lectures, scenario group, tutorial, practicals, IA, negotiated assignment, group projects. For example, if you're doing Foundies or BGDA, you'll be talking about skin lesions. For HMA, it'll be about the cardiovascular system. So asking about symptoms like angina, palpitations, dyspnea. And then afterwards, you'll get feedback and you'll have to do a reflection. Now, make sure you do the post SOCA reflection reflection ASAP otherwise if you do it after the deadline it will not register in your email and you'll have to do more soakers again in the future to make up for it my hot tip is just to do it right after you finish your soaker so that you get it out of the way and you don't end up accidentally forgetting you interact with a mix of real or simulated patients but if you use ospia they'll be simulated patients so they'll role play a specific case for you to do and apparently you also encounter these types of patients in campus clinical and you can find real patients in hospital but I never got to do it because <laughs> we were online soakers will be recorded which is good because later you can go back and forth pause it review look at the comments and see where you can improve on in terms of grading for soakers it's similar to assignments f p minus p and p plus instead of grad caps there's going to be like specific criteria for you to fulfill they'll tell you when you do it but it has to do with like structure gathering information empathy and like understanding the patient's needs and perspectives soakers are important because the feedback and the grades do contribute to your effective communication capability in your end of phase portfolio if you get f and p minuses you'll probably have to do more soakers in year two and in SOGAS patients leave comments and they are the ones who are marking you normally they will tick off any boxes or criteria that you need to improve on SOGAS start in AE of year one and they finish in HM of year two and overall you need to complete four SOGAS in total and at least one SOGA in three or four relevant courses sometimes you get the chance to do more than one SOGA in a course and you can choose whether to make it a practice or an assessed moving on to the EOC or the end of course exam there's eight courses in phase one so there's four courses in first year in your HM and your AE courses you'll be studying with second years and having SGs with them. EOCs are usually on Wednesday of week 8 at 11 a.m. There's normally no lectures, pracs, toots or anything on the Monday and Tuesday before it so that you can study. Since we were online we did have a staggered start for the EOC so some colleges went first by like five minutes so it'd be like 11 college A, 11.05 college B, blah blah blah. EOCs are two hours and 10 minutes long which includes 10 minutes reading time and in this you have 40 multiple choice questions worth one mark each and you have short answer questions which are worth 60 marks in total adding up to 100. For your first end of course in Foundies it will be shorter and there'll be less questions or I forgot how many but you can just look at the guide and figure it out yourself. MCQs normally sound like this which one of the following options is most correct? For these ones there might be two answers that are correct but one of them is more correct than the other and we normally have five options in our end of course multiple choice questions. Some other questions you just need to pick the option that is incorrect so which of the following is incorrect? High yield versus low yield you go through a lot of content Content and it's unlikely you'll be able to get through like studying everything so sort out topics that are one your weakest that you don't get at all and that two have been covered in depth for example the anatomy of joints I'll mention other topics here okay however make sure that you study adequately in foundies even if it's just the first course try and understand a little bit of what you're being taught because time kind of flies and then bam you have an EOC also because if you do end up failing foundations even though it doesn't count to your WAM which is your weighted average mark you have to do a supplementary I'm pretty sure speaking of WAM there's actually three WAMs which I discovered late last year which is quite funny one is your bachelor of med sci WAM I think one is your B med WAM and the third one is your honors WAM so your honors WAM is important because in fourth year we do research so if you want to do honors your WAM needs to be above 65 so if you're wondering what counts towards your honors WAM it may change do not trust me but for now I think it's just that the six or seven EOCs averaged out so if it's more than 65 you're good and then you also need to pass the other stuff as a barrier Okay, next is your practical exam. So you have four exams, normally all 30 minutes. Or for us, three of them were 30 minutes and, and that was 45 because they wanted to make sure the image is loaded since we were doing online exam. But I'm not sure if it would be the same for you guys if your exams are in person. So like I said before, it's divided into discipline, phys pharm, microbio, biochem, histopath, embryo, and finally anatomy. You get a 15 minute break in between and the exam normally starts at 11 a.m. Each test is out of 50. Since the practice exam is cumulative, in total you'll need 75 out of 100 150 to pass overall in each discipline so some people aim to do super well in the first two practice exams which ensures a pass and then they can just chill more in the third practice exam and focus on the end of phase exams i tried doing that but it did not work out so i ended up having to grind for the third exam but hopefully it'll work out for you so in year one these questions will be pulled from all your courses minus foundies so for example bgda hma or hmb and then aea or aeb depending on what course you study also i highly recommend that you probably study for this because i didn't and i paid the price 
price for this. The most effort I ever put in in med was for my third prac exam. And also please try and understand embryology as hard as it is because it often comes up in the histopath exam for PPE1 and PPE2. I feel like if you're going to study vigorously for something in med, I would highly recommend studying the most for the prac exam. However, you might be built different. I don't know. Types of questions in the prac exam. So in Phys Farm, you have a lot of calculations. So using formulas, using a calculator, labeling or reading graph, fill in the blank closed passages, and then like just the classic, you know, choose one option out of the five. For microbiochem, it's normally choose one option out of the five. For histopath and embryo, there's like multi-select, choose one option out of the five. They have numbered labels or tags that you need to identify. For example, A is like a squamous epithelium or whatever. And then they also have questions about the pathology of the disease. For ANAT, it's normally short free response questions that are like one to two sentences. There's like number tags and labels that you need to identify sometimes there's drop down options but they're very rare you normally have to type in or write in them and then there's also choose an option out of the five okay next are summer term and gen ed you have to do two gen eds and i think people normally do them for summer term i recommend doing one between first and second year and then one between second and third year you see i didn't do one between first and second year because i didn't know which i deeply regret because now in my current break between second and third year i have to do two and my soul is ascending it is not a vibe i'm doing astronomy and skiff i really don't like astronomy and I, I miss med. <laughs> Anyways, also choose your courses carefully. Sometimes people say XYZ is a wham boost and then you do it and it's not a wham boost. So you gotta be careful. Or you can just follow your heart and do whatever you like because that works out as well. Now you might be wondering, how do I study for medicine? What a great question. I asked someone this and they said, one way is to make lecture notes before the lecture from the slides. So that's you teaching yourself. Then you watch the lecture the next day, add in anything the lecturer says and then you can make like a one page summary. So you're condensing the info. Some people, they use like flashcards cards so like Quizlet but mostly people tend to use Anki Anki and they kind of like chuck the lecture objectives and then they put the answer to it. I think Anki is really good for anatomy especially like the image occlusion. They said that a good tracking tip is to use the class notes template on Notion to stay on top of lectures and see where notes need to be made. Another method is watch the lecture, annotate the slides whilst watching and then make notes. You can make a question document after and then study by going over those questions and chucking the answers. I've given you three methods. The first one is the trusty reliable method so these take a decent amount of time I reckon. It takes too much time in my humble opinion but go to and watch all the lectures live, annotate the slides, revise, test yourself via active recall using Anki or Quizlet. The second one is the supplementary method. So for this one, use lectures and the lecture objectives as a guide to what you should be studying and where you should be up to. But you can use textbooks to guide your learning or platforms like Amboss, Osmosis, Armando, Nerd Ninja, etc. Method three is a teamwork method. If you somehow finesse a group of like study mates, just divide the lecture responsibilities amongst yourself. For example, person A can take like lecture 147, person B takes lecture 258 or something like that. Um, I've never studied with anyone before, so I don't know how good this method is but that was something I brainstormed and now note taking options so some people they use OneNote you can download all the lecture slides annotate with whatever you feel is important using like a pen or just typing it's especially good for anatomy and histology because you're labeling the diagram however the downside is that if there's no lecture notes you are doomed however you can access previous year's lectures by going into eMed map in Foundies you'll get a tutorial on how to use eMed and map and all that jazz so make sure you do that note taking option two is Notion I've never done this but basically you write your notes in Notion format as question and answer then you hide the answers so that you can test yourself immediately so it's basically active recall option three is word so you can convert lecture slide to word and then just add in so we've talked about academics now let's talk about friends some people might be wondering how do i make friends what a fantastic question i have no idea just kidding uh just depends on how strict your definition of friends is it can be pretty easy or hard a good rule for life i think is just put yourself out there try out for medsoc and sigs and pag you know committees do extracurriculars like apply for yellow shirts apparently that's a great way to meet people outside the course go to lectures in person especially for the first two weeks go to social events med camp pub crawl all that stuff there's like fresh lunch turn up to mentoring also something I found is that most people make friends from their first SG to so the one in Foundy so that might be how you make friends. What I found was that everything takes time just do the best you can but if you found no one then eventually someone will come along hopefully I don't know. Next events to look forward to is Medcamp, Pub Crawl, Med Cruise and Med Ball. There's also other small events that are like academic for example end of course exam tutorials stuff like that. So here are things I forgot to mention last videos. <laughs>
register for your assignments and group projects by the due date so this might change so just double check your guide for negotiated and of course register expression of interest by week one wednesday 9 a.m only submit your proposal if your eoi is approved and they'll send out an email if it is submit your proposal by week two monday 9 a.m for ias register by week two friday 4 p.m for gps register by friday week two 4 p.m and one person from the group registers for everyone and for founders ia you actually make your own assignment topic so it's kind of practice for the negotiated assignment later on and for your assignments and group projects you get feedback and marks on the five grad caps so the two focus and three generic and then an overall comment on your ia and gp as a whole the comments are sometimes really helpful so they tell you what you need to improve on for example referencing and stuff like that the weighting of assessments in phase one Next is health compliance is super important. So when you're signing up for med, you have to make sure you do all the housekeeping stuff as soon as possible. They'll send you a checklist of what you need to do. For example, working with children check, police check, make sure you get your vaccinations, especially the hepatitis B one, because that was the one they had to email me about. If you're not health compliant, New South Wales Health will send you an email, but if you're still not compliant by the time hospo starts, you may be banned for the entire term from attending hospo. And then I think you may also get a comment on professionalism in your portfolio, which can negatively impact your mark. Finally, portfolio. So as you go through phase one in year one, I recommend you write down any event that's impacted you, made you change your perspective or your opinion or anything, any patient encounters that impacted you or how you conduct yourself, for example, like it's changed how you take histories and especially note down any SGs, practicals, tutorials or discussions that were insightful. This is so that when it comes to write your portfolio in year two and submit it, you'll have many experiences to draw from and you don't have to like sit there and think, oh, what did I do? So that brings us to the end of this video. Like, comment, subscribe turn your motifs on thank you for watching if you have any questions chuck them in the comments if you are shy i've made a google form for you to fill out it's in the description box of this video that's all stay safe take care i'll see you in part three now just some advice from my experience so and yeah bye